Yeah, we have here. Uh, otherwise, it'll just be all over the map. Number 35. It's really one of my favorite pieces of music. It, uh, it's very classical in nature, but it's very dramatic. It's very uh, easy. It's, it's very singable. It's not easy to sing, but it's very singable once you learn it and get over the challenge of uh, the work that it takes to put it together. Um, it tells a great story about one of the great characters of the Bible. Uh, it also teaches some great lessons about dealing with other people, uh, God dealing with us and how we relate to God and how we can uh, depend on God to help us through any crisis. He, he lived almost a charmed life, really. It wasn't a long life, but uh, everything just seemed to fall right into his lap at the perfect time. And uh, this oratorio. He, he wrote it and then he tweaked it some to improve it all the more. It's so dramatic and so uh, powerful. singing in lots of places around the country and around the world. So it's been a, a thrill and just great to find myself in Springfield, Missouri to sing this. I've performed with several companies across the United States doing both oratorio and opera and also some musical theater as well as pop selections for symphonies. And I actually enjoy every genre. They each have a little something different to offer. And I think Marvin chose me for this piece because he knew I would come in and uh, hopefully engage the audience in the piece itself. And again, Marvin and I have a relationship that spans now over five years. And uh, we've performed together, again, across the United States. And we enjoy each other's company. So I think that's how I ended up getting here. The choir learning it, we had a workshop back in February where we spent uh, many hours just learning notes and talking about the oratorio itself and how it's built and the Bible, script, the scripture that it's uh, based upon. Well, I spent in February is when we really started uh, conversations about what we were going to do. And then it was really Yeah, but before that, almost every choir practice, we knew one of the numbers. So we kind of be familiar little by little by little. That goes back quite a way. The orchestra, we contracted that out. We had someone that took care of hiring the orchestra. I've spent many, many hours studying the score. This is the third time I've conducted this, so I was pretty familiar with it coming in, but still, it's been a number of years since I conducted it, so I had to spend a number of hours conducting through it again by myself, making sure I knew where the cues were and knew who was coming in when, uh, when it's getting soft, when it's getting loud. Uh, you have to ask yourself questions musically like, why did he put it in 6-8 here? Why did he go into 4 here? Why did he slow down? Why did he speed up? What's his reason for doing this? And try to understand what the composer had in mind in order to make the whole piece come to life. And I, I would like to have cut more from a time standpoint, but when I was going through everything I would look at, I think, well, this is just so you, good. You can't, can't cut, cut it from this. a musical or dramatic standpoint.
and really these soloists, as I see it, are as good as you would hear anywhere. You could go to New York, uh, Los Angeles, Houston, wherever you went, and uh, you would hear people that weren't any better than this, or you may hear these same people. And we're just fortunate that they agreed to come here for pennies on the dollar, what they would have gotten somewhere else, because I uh, had information on all of them that I could blackmail them with. So <laughs> okay, they, they agreed to come and okay. see boys. Just don't mess with Marvin Murphy. Uh, well, I've been singing for, oh, probably at least 20 years <laughs> professionally. Um, I've done uh, lots of opera, I've done some concert work, uh, I've done oratorio with, with symphonies. Um, but I have quite a bit of experience in performing, um, and I hold a doctorate in vocal performance. My experience with singing is that currently I'm a master's student at the University of Oklahoma. I started studying opera kind of late in my career, and it was actually with Marvin Murphy, who um, saw me sing here at University Heights. And I sang His Eyes on a Sparrow, and he said, I'd like for you to sing in my opera company. And I said, okay, and I'd never even seen an opera or heard one. And I sang in the chorus, and I thought, I want to know more about this. So I decided to study uh, postgraduate work at University of Oklahoma, and um, Three years later, Marvin calls me and asks me to come and sing for Elijah, so that's how I'm here. I think the choir was done very well tonight. Uh, at the first rehearsal with orchestra, the choir came through, and we had even if that, we had some people missing, and the choir still sang very well. One of the things, nice things about this particular oratorio is that the chorus is not just singing back up. The chorus is actually an integral part of what happens. They interact with the soloist, and Elijah in particular, where they uh, the, the angry crowd and they, uh, their emotions turn, they get angry, they get happy. Uh, there are times when they serve as sort of a narrator where they talk about what's happened. Uh, lots of different things, so they're a very important part of what goes on. Sunday is just going to be wonderful. Well, now that they're pulling it together, we're getting a, a better feel for it. I've never seen it before that I can recall, but today at the rehearsal, I Oh, I see how all this pulls together now. And it's pulling together very beautifully. Makes a difference having the solo of us that we haven't had them before. Oh, yeah. I think it's challenging to a professional. Uh, <laughs> to an amateur, it's daunting. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to follow if you don't know, you know, you don't know music. And, uh, I, but I, I like it as a challenge. Yes. And it is a challenge for them because there's lots of singing and... Uh, it's an awful lot of notes. It's a, a huge, massive work by a, by a great classic master, Mendelssohn, and it's so just a great deal of notes to put together in a short time, but tomorrow it's going to come together for a glorious experience. And... Uh, How large an orchestra are you going to have? We have 30 members. And they've the been drawn from where? Uh, Springfield Symphony primarily. Uh, some advanced students are playing at about the same size as we use with the Springfield Regional Opera Orchestra, okay. and uh, the same level of players, many of the same players that play in the sure. opera orchestra are playing for us. It's been really well, the, the choir sounds wonderful with the orchestra, the orchestra sounds great, it's in tune, everyone seems to be really syncing well together for the first time especially. It just sounds really great for, especially this church, it's wonderful, it's a beautiful church. I don't know if I like Marvin's church or not. I think he's doing a wonderful job. <laughs> Marvin has a, a wonderful combination of professionalism and just just being a person. This will be a first for us as we've always been colleagues um, rather than one taking the lead. I feel very secure with him with the baton in his hand because I know he will have prepared his choir to the extent that they are ready for the task, they're up to it, the orchestra's there, 
I know I've done my preparation. Great sense of humor, and he kind of guides everybody along by all the themes, rather than just trying to say, oh, here's the music, this is the way we've got to do it. Um, it's, it's a tremendous responsibility when you're dealing with uh, not only a full chorus, but uh, a full orchestra and soloists as well, and it's hard to keep everybody together, and I think he's doing a great job. We've, we've had even similar training in the past, uh, going to the same seminary, and there's a confidence there that allows for a freedom for us as performers. He kind of lets us help ourselves in that way. production will do a few things. One is a challenge for the choir and I, in accepting the challenge they will become better. I hope that it will bring glory to God. My hopes are for the ensemble as, as a group, the orchestra and choir, that we just reach as many people at that performance as we can. The biggest hope is it comes off as it's supposed to when it's supposed to. Also, it gives them the opportunity to work with some world-class singers in that the souls we're bringing in. Well, that has, it has a terrific message. I think it's a good message. We hope it'll be a, a religious inspiration to people. And we hope that a lot of people will come. I guess we're not supposed to say that, but we'd like to fill the place. I hope that it will tell the story of Elijah in a wonderfully um, beautiful kind of way so that the listener is totally captivated by that story. It'll help them understand the Bible character better and understand some biblical concepts better. It helps me understand some biblical concepts better. Well, from what I see here today, it's coming together. I think when the time comes, it's going to just mesh and it's going to be fun. I think it, uh, based on the rehearsal, I think it will be a very fine performance. Um, the choir is strong, the orchestra is strong, um, all of the soloists are strong, so um, I think it will be a wonderful experience for those who are uh, here in the sanctuary. I think it's going to probably be a fantastic show knowing that Marvin's capabilities and what he's done, I'm sure, with the chorus and finding the soloists. So I'm, I'm expecting good things and I'm sure I won't be disappointed. And it also helps put a face on the church to the community. It, uh, we've, we've had lots of publicity about this. We'll have lots of people coming from outside and they will get an impression of what University Heights is like through this. And that we just devote this performance uh, to the Lord and that we make the most beautiful sounds possible. And that I hope it will change lives. I hope it will change me to think of filling those huge shoes again of Elijah and to uh, think of the congregation hearing this, what is their response? The choir is singing all of this and the orchestra playing it. What is the response in life that we have to such a story as this? God can work miracles, we know, and did in Elijah's life. He can do the same in our life.